I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about tablet-friendly design, GIF.js, good UI practices, and more. Let's check it out. First up is a blog post from the CSS Tricks blog. Friend is, of the show. Which, of course, is maintained by Chris Coyer. This is a guest post from Ben Terrill. I hope I'm saying his last name right. Called, A Couple of Best Practices for Tablet-Friendly Design. The first tip he gives is to increase the font size and the line height so that your text is legible on tablets. The next tip is to increase the size of buttons and basically be aware of tap targets so that, that your finger can actually hit the, uh, hit the buttons because it's a little bit less imprecise than a mouse. You should enable contextual keyboards. So for example, if you need to type in a phone number, you should enable a numeric keyboard to make it a little bit easier to type in. And there's a couple of other great tips there, but it's a really great blog post, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Yeah, firsthand. Don't just take our word for it. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. Next up, we have a project called GIF.js. Don't you mean GIF.js? Pretty sure it's GIF.js. I'm pretty sure you're wrong. Like the peanut butter. Yeah, this I... is a fully featured JavaScript GIF encoder that runs in your browser. How crazy is that? You can actually create GIFs right inside your web browser. Let's take a look at the code here. So um, pretty easy to use. You just create a new GIF variable, um, adding in this new GIF. You specify the number of workers you want as well as the quality. This uses Canvas to add different images in the case of adding an animated GIF. And you can get the downloads and documentation over on GitHub. This works in most browsers, works in Google Chrome, Firefox 17, Safari 6, IE 10, and up. So a um, ton of different options that you can put in, uh, including whether or not to repeat the GIF, uh, the quality, workers, and just a ton of different options. So anyway, pretty crazy that you can actually fully encode GIFs inside the web browser. And check that out. We'll have a link to it in the show notes, which you can get to in our iTunes feed. Search for The Treehouse Show or on YouTube at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Next up is PortKit, which is this really cool set of UX metaphor equivalents for iOS and Android. So if you're designing, say, an iPhone app and you want to create the equivalent UX on an Android device or on another version of iOS, you should definitely check this out. So let's take a look at PortKit. I'm going to scroll down the page here. And they have this UX comparison chart. So on the left side, they have iOS 7. Then in the middle, they have iOS 6. And on the right, they have Android 4 and up. You can, of course, download PSDs here that will give you all of the UX elements. Or you can go ahead and just compare the individual elements that you want to take a look at. You can also go directly to the documentation. So say that you were creating this switch in iOS. You can look at the equivalent documentation for Android just by looking across the columns here. So they have all of the UI elements that you could possibly need. And they also have links to some pretty cool resources. There it is down at the bottom. So definitely check that out if you're designing iPhone apps, Android apps, and you want them to be cross-platform. Just check it out even if you're doing less or more than that, too. Yeah, don't, check it out no matter what. Yeah, don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a blog post called What Every Web Developer Needs to Know About URL Encoding. Now, when you link to something, you know what you have is the URL. And encoding refers to changing the characters around just a little bit if you need to paste them somewhere else. As an example, if you're trying to link to a web page and you want to set a parameter that has a space in it, like someone's full name, well, that space needs to be encoded because you can't have spaces in a URL. And that's where you have that nasty, like, percent two zero. Yeah, see, look at that. Nick knows it off the top of his head. Yep. Just tweet him if you need to know any of those characters. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this is a great article that goes into everything that you would need to know 
uh, about this. Now, there are things that like are common pitfalls. Um, what are the reserved characters? What are character encodings? Um, am I using ASCII or UTF-8? Um, so it goes through how to fix that, um, as well as common mistakes. Anyway, there is probably a bit too much to go into right on the show here, but definitely check out the blog post. Uh, get a good idea of what's going on with URL encoding. Very cool stuff. Well, as you may or may not know, HTML5 has introduced a number of new form elements. Of course, support for those form elements is a little bit shaky depending on which browser you're using. But fortunately, there's this really cool web page that you can look at all the HTML5 elements in, and you can basically see what that looks like in your particular browser. So in this case, I'm using the latest version of Google Chrome. And so if I go ahead and scroll down the page here to uh, something like input type date time local, I can see, oh look, that actually uh, seems to work in my browser. Uh, you can also have a color picker here, so it looks like that one works. Um, there's also sliders here, uh, which is input type range. So there's a bunch of uh, you know, different form elements here that you may have not seen uh, except in the context of like a jQuery plugin or something like that. And uh, it's good to know if it's okay to use those in uh, the browser that you're targeting. Like I said, you should definitely check this out if you're planning to use HTML5 form elements and you're not sure if the browsers you're targeting supports them. And you know, for more of an overview for that, you can go review other episodes of the Treehouse Show where we've talked about this. We have before. talked about HTML5 form elements quite a bit. HTML5. Bam. Next up, we have an app called Prepros. This is an application where you can pre-process your CSS and JavaScript. Super easy to use, and it is also cross-platform. So if we take a look at the Prepros website, it says, hey, preprocessing just got easier with Prepros. This is what it looks like. So what you would do is grab your app, drag it in here, or click that little plus sign, and then you can see the different uh, items that you have in here. Now, this works with CoffeeScript, SAS, Jade, Haml, ton of different templating languages. And you can actually tell your web browser to um, reload live. It can use optionally use the live reload pro, uh, plugin. So this works on Windows and Mac, cross-platform. Download it, totally free. Check it out. And I think we should probably address what pre-processing actually is. Good call, Nick. For people that may not be quite I as, always do this. as hip as I, us. I always do this. Uh, basically, pre-processing is just a way for you to make uh, it's, it's basically a way to add features on top of uh, things like CSS or JavaScript. So if you're writing CSS and you want to use, say, a variable, you can go ahead and do that in SAS or less, and it will process that and output CSS that you can then include in your web page. So it's a cool way to get some additional functionality that is not necessarily provided in the languages by default. Good, good explanation. Thanks, Jason. Uh, next up is Real Shadow, which is a piece of JavaScript that will make it really easy for you to generate shadows in the browser. So if we go ahead and take a look here, I'll mouse over these shadows here, and whoa. Whoa. It actually casts these shadows as if there were real lighting. Is your mouse daylight? It looks that way, but actually, I imagine, I haven't looked at the code, but I imagine that this is using uh, some sort of box shadow to generate these and just multiplying the shadow a number of times to actually make it cast there. So if you look at, say, this little red triangle here, and I move the mouse to the upper right, you can see that the shadow becomes longer. And it looks like there's multiple shadows being generated there, and they're just being spread out. This is a plugin for jQuery, but you can use it without jQuery. That was a recent addition that was made. If you scroll down here, you can see uh, how to use it with jQuery, how to use it without jQuery, how to use it with inset shadows, and you can even use it with a couple of other JavaScript libraries. You don't necessarily have to use it with uh, jQuery. So. 
pretty nifty stuff, and you know, if you're trying to do that uh, on your own, it would be pretty difficult to do, so it's nice that somebody has already written the code for you. Next, we have a site called Good UI. Uh, this is a site for good landing page design. Now, That's good, because I hate it when people try to make bad UI. I'm glad somebody finally had the idea to make good UI. Yeah, exactly. We had two submissions to the show this week. One was good UI, one was bad UI. Guess, was, guess which one we picked. The good one. Good UI. So this, uh, this web page actually has a ton of great tips when creating landing pages. So if you want to have high conversion rates and make your site easier to use, give all of these a try. So there's some great tips in here using a one-column layout instead of multi-columns. And you'll also notice that this site looks pretty great. It's very easy to read. It's very simple. Um, so they actually go through and do all their own tips while they're showing you the page. They're saying, hey, give people a gift. They're more likely to uh, download your stuff. Um, merge similar functions instead of fragmenting your UI. As you build a site, you tend to add different elements to the page, and sometimes more than one of them can do pretty much the same thing. So you always want to be looking and seeing how you can simplify your web pages. Anyway, there's a ton of great tips in here. Don't want to spoil it. You can find the link in the show notes. And I recommend giving it a read. It really is a bunch of really good tips, not bad tips. We don't, we don't want any of those. Yeah, really cool stuff. Well, I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at JCypher. For more information on anything we talked about, including show notes, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GoTreehouse. You can also find us in iTunes. Search for The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile development, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.